My name is Dale Jacobson and I'm a chiropractor here in Nevada City and I've been practicing for approximately 30 years and for 30 years I've been trying to interest my patients in organic foods and with heavy emphasis on particularly raw milk products, particularly fermented milks, yogurts, kefirs, clabberds, cottage cheeses, things in that realm. And recently a wonderful raw milk was developed um, in a dairy near Fresno and we're very pleased today to have Mark McPhee who is the instigator of that dairy with us and he's one of my heroes so it's exciting to just be with him today. Thank you. And we're going to be you. doing a sort of a rambling conversation about milk and hopefully it'll be something that patients can use and talk to their friends about and so it's a joy having you. Thank you. Thank you. You as well. <laughs> I, I think I kind of feel like you're a brother in the raw revolution so to speak. You know you look back to 1972 and you, you, you remember a, a quote from Earl Butts who was the Undersecretary of Agriculture under Nixon and he said when you hear the word organic think starvation. Well 2002 they signed an international law right? It took 30 years to get there. I think we're like 1975 with raw milk. Yeah I think so. <laughs> Long ways to go but a great start. I think there was a reason he was called Butts. <laughs> um, exactly. <laughs> so what I thought I would do is just go over a kind of a general history of milk. We can work on that a little bit because there's quite a bit of philosophy now out there in the health realm about milk products being very hazardous, harmful, causing heart disease and all that. So I just wanted to go back and touch historically a little bit. And the first evidence of milk drinking and herding was back about 30,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the first hard evidence was 20,000 years ago when they found milk residues in, part, in pottery. Um, and since then, people have done animal husbandry and raised animals and kept them for milk and for other things. And even a thousand years before Jesus, in the Old Testament, the Hindus with their Vedas were saying that milk was the most important food for people. They were having cows as their sacred animal. And throughout the Bible there's references on milk, particularly goat milk, on always having enough for your household and your servants and your maidens. And so milk has always been a traditional food. Hippocrates talked about it Hippocrates in, talked in Greek about times. It. Marco Polo talked about it in his That's travels right. through Asia. That's right. So milk is a traditional food. It's been eaten by traditional cultures forever. So it's a little bit odd that now we suddenly have this great wisdom on milk being bad for us. And so I was going to go over just a little bit of sort of the history of how it became bad. Um, and milk has always been raw throughout history because there's no refrigeration. So it's had to been clabbered, made into yogurt and butters and cottage cheeses. And in... 1812 in the US we had the War of 1812 and the English at that point stopped the import of whiskey and the United States having no whiskey had no way to make their women beautiful late at night and so they had to immediately start developing distilleries for making also, alcohol. Also rum embargo with Jamaica during that period of time just after that too. That's right. So we had to get sharp on making ethanol for people. That's right. Rum and whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the cows had to be moved about because they needed more space for making grain fields. So the cows were displaced. <clears throat> they made distilleries. And within a couple of years, all the major cities in the United States had distilleries. And the cows were then put next door to the distilleries in confinement. That was the first of the